for this one. I know, isn't that funny? All right. I'm going to plug us back in. This week is our empowerment week. Just muted. Yes, thank you, Viv. <laughs> My mother likes to talk as much as I do. It's all good. All right. So we've got our meditation cards. We're going to settle onto the floor or into a chair. Ah, deep in the breath. Find all of that. Start with the body. Notice if there's anything in your nervous system, any twitching, any buzzing. Some people have chronic burning. Check in with the soles of the feet. Then move into the respiratory system. Really fill and notice what the outward press of the lungs into the rib cage does to the musculoskeletal system. Do that two more times. One more time and notice how things just start to settle. Big and deep and wide. <sighs> then go into the energy system. There are many things that are winding the clock these days. You know, it's what is it that is hitting me of my own, you know, of my own choosing, the types of music I'm listening to, the programming I'm listening to, the people that I'm sort of surrounding myself with. Those are the things of our own choosing, affecting the energetic system. Check in with something that's maybe in there that might not have been of my own choosing. Or maybe at the time I didn't feel it was, or maybe it's something I'm doing out of habit and I didn't even realize what an effect it had on me. Breathe deep again. And again. And last time, really fill and expand. <sighs> in the face of upheaval, we can rush for cover or comfort in people, opinions, or circumstances before we fully assess what is being offered. In a flurry, we might cherry pick data or pick bits of this and pieces of that to get us through in a day. And that is completely fine. But when things don't hold up, be mindful that the energy expended rebuilding our sand castles that we might be building around us, that energy could be invested possibly in more solid fortitude. So once again, we've drawn the shift card. And it just seems to pop up because the world is ever shifting. Take one hand, place it on one shoulder. And the other hand, place it on the other shoulder. Pull in. Guard your energy space. Pull in. What is it that is in my space, maybe habitual, maybe of my own choosing, that might actually be pulling me off center? Because the world is shifting around us. I got to come home. I got to come home. I got to come home. 
breathe into this own loving space, this own little cocoon that you have made for yourself. And spin silken threads around yourself. Spin and spin and in the mind's eye, silken threads, maybe threads of light. Let them move side to side, top to bottom until you are completely encased in a little cocoon of light. Hug it in really tight around your body so that maybe when you take a deep breath, it's like, oh, even in the mind's eye, it's a little tight in here. And then as if the little caterpillar that spun itself in, you know, in this world, we value what it has actually spun. We make clothes and sailboat sails and, and all kind, manner of things out of what a simple bug spins around itself so that it can turn itself into a moth or a butterfly. Bring it in and around. And then when you're ready, breathe in, decide to release the energy and find your wings or your moose antlers. And maybe your elbows are down here because of shoulder things that are going on. Maybe you want to bring yours all the way up so that you can get maximum spread of the ribs so that the ribs are involved in the opening. And then one at a time, the right wing comes down to the left knee and then breathe it back up. And then the left. Because when those creatures emerge, they don't just come out and just fly away, you know. I watched National Geographic too. <laughs> They come out, they venture out, and then they slowly start to stretch the fibers of their new being. They were kind of squishy and sludgy and lumpy when they went in. And then they had these like giant appendages when they come out. <sighs> there you go, one more time each side. Right arm comes in, shoulders are going, hey, the left arm comes in, lift, hold, and then tip everything forward, bowing down to thy inner self, and then tip everything a little up and back, expanding through that thoracic body. And then tip down and in, let the arms come down, reach for the sides of the legs, roll down into the thighs, let the head hang heavy. And just hold there, noticing that the squeezing is causing the breath to be a little more shallow. But the more we struggle for that breath to come in, the more separation we're going to cause between those shoulder blades in the back. And we're really going to spread the fibers out back there. <sighs> Work through any scar tissue spaces with one more breath. <sighs> then the left forearm comes across the thighs. Right arm swivels and reaches up. Breathing in, and then swap other side. Right arm tucks in, left arm reaches up. If these are all too grand of a movement for you to begin with, tuck it down each side one more time. Then keep it small, keep it tight. And it doesn't have to look like any of the other squares you're looking at. Tuck it in, reach. You want to move like you. And then both forearms down and in, let that head hang heavy. <sighs> Good. 
And then as the body rises, let the elbows slice straight back, forearms level with the floor if you can. Right knee is gonna rise, tuchus is hookus on the edge of the seat. Right knee rises, breathe in, breathe out, lift, stretch it out to the side, take that right elbow, put it down, reach out and over the body. Yes, mother dear, I'm gonna switch around and turn around on the other side. <laughs> Come back up through center, level those arms off, pick that leg up, move it right back in, breathe, and then tuck back down over those thighs. The whole time, embody the butterfly that you are, embody the person that you are becoming. On a quantum level, there is no time. You are only just in the moment, always becoming. Arms shift up, level with the floor, shoulder blades together, lift that left leg, breathe it in, and then send it out. Put it down, elbow comes down, straight. So for some of us, the elbow may not come down to the thigh. We may have to have that forearm down or have that hand down. One side is going to feel way more awesome than the other. Oh, oh, yes. Breathe it in. Breathe it out. Slice back through level off. Pick that leg up. Put it down. Turn the fingertips up. Interlace those thumbs over the top of the head as if you're going to dive into a giant cosmic pool overhead. Breathe in. Breathe out. Modify the arms in any way you need to. Shift to the edge of the chair. Lean back. Try not to touch the shoulder blades to the chair. Roll the heels up. Test that first. Then lift the knees if you want to lift the knees. Oh yeah, Ori's got her game face on. Oh, I'm shaking. Breathe in, breathe out. Legs land wide, hands on the thighs. Shift the body side to side. So you just got your little butterfly. You've come out of your cocoon and you're just, you know, you happen to just come across a real quick fitness class when you came out. You know, some monarch butterfly out there with little leg warmers on. It's like, come on in, stretch your wings before you fly away to Texas and Mexico and Central America. Take that right arm, push it away, really push. And if your spine is happy with you today, left arm slices out to the side. So we're holding, grabbing onto those bones here. And your little butterfly or moth of choice is like, Right, I got this. And then shift, other side. Holding, belly draws in, right arm slices out. If it feels appropriate. Inhaling, exhaling, slide down to the floor. If you're on the floor, wide leg forward fold. So the heels go way out, the body folds down and in. <sighs> Let your wings just kind of sag with gravity. Soon enough, you'll be able to fly away. Inhale, exhale. Roll that body up. Let everything settle head over shoulders, shoulder over hips. Walk your left foot in just a little bit. Arms are going to go back out into T. Right leg straightens out. So if you're seated on the floor, you're simply going to plant your pelvis and lift your right leg. Oh yeah, you can lean back into it, absolutely. Because that's the way we normally do it when we're on a mat. You lean back and then lift. Three, 
two, one, put it down. Oh yes, stretch out over that right leg. Turn that heart. There's, there it is. It's like cracking a safe. You got to open and then open a little more and then open a little more. And that's how the shift happens. The shift is coming anyways. We can fight it or we can slowly morph with it so that when the shift happens, it feels as natural as humanly possible. Breathing in, breathing out, rise up, <sighs> let everything settle. I mean, the, the caterpillar doesn't go inside and go, oh man, I gotta grow wings now. I mean, maybe it does, I don't know, I don't speak caterpillar. And then the, and the butterfly comes out and is like, oh, boy, I really liked my lumpiness back when it was really easy just to eat leaves. It just does what it does. Bring that leg in, stretch the other out. Arms reach out, hold here. We're gonna lift that left leg. This is everybody's favorite, I promise. Lift, oh, ho, ho, ho. grabbing on. All of this is supporting bone structure, osteopenia, osteoporosis, and working through the nervous system. Three, two, one, put it down, reach out and over. And then shift. I mean, because really, osteopenia, osteoporosis are shifts in body chemistry. The body has started to draw calcium from the bones or vice versa, isn't adding to the bones when it needs to. So it's a body chemistry thing. It's shifting. Somehow it has shifted. So this causes us to shift the sands back. Breathe in, breathe out, lift, pull both of those legs in. Legs out in front of you, staff posture if you're seated on the floor. Inhale and exhale. We're gonna take one hand up on one shoulder, the other hand up on the other shoulder. We're gonna pause just a moment. Breathing, holding inside, waiting for the metamorphosis to happen to us so that in just the right timing, when we open up, we're not too late, we're not too early. Lift up, moose antlers. Tuck the fingertips forward, sweep them across the back. So you're gonna come across the back. If you're seated on the floor, you're in staff posture and you've got your hands spread across the back of the sacrum. Open the shoulder space. Hold nice and firm, lift that right thigh up and away. So if you're seated in staff posture, that heel's gonna get about six, eight, 10 inches off the floor. And then it's just gonna be like, ha. Ah. It's probably how a butterfly's wings sound when it comes out, bah, like a strummed string. Put that leg down, holding nice and firm. Switch which hand is on top. Hold there, shoulder blades coming together in the back, firmness in the belly in the back, left leg rises. Lots of attention to the breath as the body struggles. Release. <sighs> Moose antlers come back up. Lean it back. If you are on the floor, just lean back at a nice, nice angle, maybe 35, 45 degrees. If you're in a chair, shoulder blades on the back of the chair, toes, and then rise. So upward facing boat, if you need to grab the backs of the thighs, grab the backs of the thighs. Oh, yes. Because this little pack of monarch butterflies is gonna have abs for when we go flapping across the Southeast, going across the Caribbean. <sighs> breathing in, breathing out, release hands and roll all the way down onto the floor if you're seated on the mat and just stretch yourself out. Ah. 
all of us are going to point our toes way beyond the edges of our chairs. If the shoulders want to play along, we're going to reach up and back. If you've got a really sharp edge on your chair, be mindful. You might want to roll a towel and stick it across the top edge of the chair. Breathing in. Breathing out, release the stretch with the arms. Right knee comes in, wind relieving posture. It works, I promise. <laughs> so yogis throughout history have been known to do interesting things like survive on grass. Well, human stomachs aren't exactly made to digest grass. So they ended up with some intestinal issues and they think that that's where this particular posture came from. It might be a whole lot of mystical dreaming. I'm not real sure. I'm still reading a book on yoga that kind of seems to debunk a lot of what we fantasized about yoga. Breathe in, breathe out. Head and shoulders roll forward, left leg rises. So if you're in a chair, you're gonna be parallel to the floor or even higher. If you're on the floor, roll up and hold. You could tuck the nose into the knee. Mm. Lots of breath. And then left leg comes down. Left arm reaches out. The knee opens up. So if you're on the floor, roll all the way down on your back and just open your thigh. Let the head and shoulders rest back. If the left hand needs to be under the head, let the left hand be under the head. If you're super flexible, reach down, grab your big toe or the outside edge of your foot. And if you never thought you were gonna sit in a chair like this, welcome to the best day of your life. <laughs> Otherwise, just keep the knee bent. Breathing in. You can impress the neighbors. Be like, hey, look what I did in yoga today. <laughs> bend the knee, bring it in. Put that foot down. Oh, fingertips behind the ears. Shoulder blades. I'm trying to add extra syllables to blades. Shoulder blades press in. Breath. And here we go again. Left knee pulls in. Oh, this leg needed that. Yes, Lord. That's what I'm talking about. Whew. Sometimes I have a God moment in yoga. I'm just like, woo, that's where it is. That's the place where my energy is going and hiding. That's where the blockage is. That's where the limp is developing. Oh, got to do some work in this area. Head and shoulders roll up. Right leg rises if you're ready. Squeeze that thigh into the abdomen. That's how we get that colon cleansing action going. Yes, I brought that into class again. It's all about the colon. Megan Trainer says it's all about the base. I say it's all about the colon. Breathe in. Breathe out. Lower that leg. Pull it in, pull it in, pull it in. Right arm goes out. Open that thigh. If that's too much, tuck behind the thigh. If that just seems like too much, just hang out. And if that's not enough, there you go. So your neighbors might not be impressed, but your cat might be. <laughs> and then your cat will do this and just, mine does it with a spinal twist. She like then rotates her whole body and does this. Inhale. Exhale. <sighs> Fold it in. Pull it in, hug it, put it down, slide those feet in, sit up, legs a little wide, circles. So if you're on the floor, crisscross applesauce and let those circles happen. Or legs out, you were fine. You were good where you were. Oh yeah, now slow it down. Give it like one really, really juicy circle. And then come all the way through center and go in the opposite direction. And you know, I'm sitting here looking at this deck of meditation cards. And I don't know how many times in the last, I don't even know how many classes we've taught at this point, Ari. 
yeah, 50 of these maybe. And we've drawn that shift card how many times? Now slow down. I know, 10 times out of 50. I mean, that's, that's, that's a fifth of the classes we keep drawing that shift card. There are 52 cards in that deck. It's like, oh my God, what the statistically, it's, it's improbable. And we keep pulling it. Come center, drop the head, hang heavy a moment. It just speaks of the cosmos going, hey, you're still shifting. You're not done yet. You're still shifting. I mean, the Rocky Mountains took how long to shift up and get that way? Mount Everest is still getting taller every year. You know, it's like when I was growing up at the beach in the south, breathe in, I'll finish the story in a second. Breathe out. If you are in a chair and you want to go into a forward fold, let the tuchus rise, hands to shins, knees, feet, or floor. Turn and put the hands in the chair or arms on the back of the chair. If you are on the floor, curl yourself on up and in and come up into a forward fold. And then let the knees shift. You want wide legs, go wide legs. You want close legs because of knee issues, then go close legs. But growing up in and around the beach, you could go out one day and, you know, the dunes would be kind of one shape and then you'd look around, the dunes would be slightly another shape, but really they looked like they never moved. I mean, you really had to pay attention. Sometimes something would grow up, you know, some buttercups would come up out of them or some sea oats or something. And it just, you know, the shift happens so slowly. And then being from South Carolina, Hurricane Hugo came along. And in one night, everything all the, all the sand dunes were gone, just period, gone. You go out and you go, oh my God. So some things shift slowly in our lives. And then some things are a bit like a hurricane. Now shift into the right hip until you can really see if you can get into the outside edge of that hip where that IT band attaches, where that bursa is. Breathe it in. Breathe it out, shift slowly like a moving dune, opposite side. See what's there. I mean, because the caterpillar doesn't climb in the cocoon and then like just switch a switch the next day and go, boom, I'm a butterfly. It takes a long time. Breathe in, come through center, hold your breath in. Then blow it out like a hurricane. <sighs> Bend the knees. Roll up. Make your way all the way up. Let those moose antlers rise. <sighs> and like a beautiful butterfly. <laughs> Name that movie. <laughs> Isn't it a bug's life? I think so. Breathe in. Breathe out. Right hand, left hip. Open up and twist to the left. Let that arm stretch back. Reach for the wall behind you. Come back through center. Moose antlers each side. Left hand, right hip. Reach back. Extend that wing. You never know, you might need this type of motion somewhere in life. <laughs> Moose antlers, bring it in. Close them down and in, put those forearms together, knees bend, crumple in and down, take a breath at the bottom and explode nice and slow. Ah, back up, forearms together. Sink down and in, stretch through that spine. Take this very slowly if you have compromised spine. You do not need to move at the same rate that we do. Last time, sink down and in. Roll open, really expand. And then let the arms level off. Let the shoulders level over the hips, feet slightly wider than hips, shift to the right, let that outer leg 
rise up off the floor. Now, what I've learned over time is that I have a tendency to let go in my belly and my tailbone starts to point out back. So then I'm out here. If I pull that belly in, you watch my heel, it comes in line and then my entire spine is engaged instead of just resting back there on my SI joint. Breathing in, breathing out, take that left heel, slide it across the front, do a little curtsy, bring those wings together, crumple down and in best you can. You may not get all the way to that knee with those elbows. Sweep up, open up two more times. Forearms together, elbows down and in. Chrysalis phase, baby. We are going through it. Yes, admire your wings, all of the work. Hold here, lift, stretch, embody your own being. And then side by side, hands in by the heart. And if you loved that side, ah, wait till side number two. Step a little wide with the feet. Level those arms off. Pull the belly button in. Tailbone slides down toward the floor. We don't want to make the yoga accident of tucking it in and over flattening the lumbar because you know, a lot of old time yogis are starting to look like this because we used to say tuck and hold. Just a little brightness down there. Shift into the left leg. Lift the outer belly button draws in. There's firmness in the outside of the hips and right here at the top of the legs and where the buns come in. Breathing in, breathing out, shift that leg across the front. If it doesn't go across the front, don't judge yourself. Arms come together, fold down and in. Now that one side's gonna feel a little more funky, open up. If you need to be side by side, then be side by side. Down and in. Open up. This is a twist on doing. <sighs> oh, there we go. Got her Dasana posture. Hold, lift, expand. And then side by side, hands it at the heart. All right. So the next is up to you. We're going to take that right leg and we're going to step it back. The heel comes high at first and then press the heel into the floor for that calf stretch. If you've got a chair nearby and you want to hold on and press down and in, then hold on and press down and in. The work would then be to climb the body up and possibly pull that chair up and in. Heel really presses down, so it's a shorter stance, unless you're blessed with long Achilles. Left hand can stay on the back of the chair if it wants to. Right arm rises, sweeps back. We breathe, unlock that right knee if there's any torsion in it. Inhale. Exhale, that hand plops down on that right leg. Left arm reaches up and back. And then butterflies do what butterflies are going to do. We're going to cartwheel. So right hand or left hand can go all the way to the floor for the half moon, or we're going to reach back down up and over toward this chair, lift the heel and hold here, lift the leg and hold here, go full Monty. Or as Ori's going to do, she's going to come down. She plops that right hand on the floor or you can do it with a chair. Now that was a lot of talking to get us into one spot. Take that back heel, kick it in a little, and then straighten it back out, and then put it back down. Woo! Step that right leg back forward. <laughs> like I said, gentle yoga, not easy yoga. So find the challenge, even in the small spaces that you want to find them in. <sighs> All right. 
Left leg's gonna step back. We're gonna find that heel press, get that calf stretch, because we've got a lot of folks that experience calf cramps, especially at night. You know, those are dietary things in a lot of ways, but some of it is nerve issues. Some of it is really, you know, the nerves are firing all day and the muscles are really tired, but then the nerves don't know to stop. And then, ah, restless leg syndrome. Breathe, inhale, exhale. If you have the back of a chair, left leg is back. So that right arm is going to reach up and back. Spinning through that torso, grabbing onto those bones, breathing in, breathing out. The hand lands, the right hand reaches up and back. Now, if the knee is squeaking, that heel on that left foot can slide in just a little bit to take the tension off. All right, we get a second try, Ori. I know, so exciting. So you can take that body and go all the way over or you can slowly bring it down and in, go back into the calf, reach it forward, tip it, or all the way up. It could be little, it could be big. You could come into the top of the head, breathe in, breathe out, kick that back heel in just a moment and then stretch it, put it down, swivel forward, step it up and in and breathe. <sighs> oh yeah, no time like the present for a little butterfly hula hoop. Shift and let those hips wide. So at any point that you're looking and you're going, I'm not doing that in this lifetime. This Oh, stir the chakras, stir that energy system. You could just sit here and go back to childhood. I mean, it's great. Works through that SI joint really gently. Pause, go in the opposite direction. Oh, yeah, outside of the hip. Ah, and then before we wander away in our mind's eye, keep those feet a little wide, step maybe even a little further off the edges of the mat. Have a chair handy if you need a chair handy. Hands to hips so that you've got wings. Pop that beautiful chest up so that those collarbones rise and you've got a little dip in that back so that those erector spinae muscles come up. They become really bright and they hang on. Inhale, exhale. For those of you that are comfortable with a wide leg forward fold, tip down and in, trying to keep that little dip in the spine as long as you can. If you're gonna dip forward and come down into the back of a chair, Make that happen or into the seat of a chair. And then let the body sink all the way down and in. For those of you that want to do a wide leg downward facing dog, you could crawl your upper body forward some and really get into the armpits and the chest area. That would look a bit like that. Head might even touch the floor. For those that aren't gonna go that far forward, you might be here at the thighs, or down at the shins, or back in the seat of the chair. So wherever you are, take three more breaths. You might be just hanging out, having a little conversation on the inside. <sighs> Take all of your attention into your left knee. Bend it just a little. If you're in that light, wide leg downward facing dog, walk your hands back some so that you're balanced over your feet. Take all of your attention, put it into your left hand. Stretch the right arm out and up. Big wingspan here. Your painful shoulders, you might only get here. If you're in the back of the chair, you might be here. Breathe in, breathe out, straighten the left leg a little bit, dip back down toward your support item. Inhale, 
Exhale, right knee bends just a little. Left arm goes to open. I mean, if you were a butterfly and you came out of your cocoon, what would be the first line of a song you would belt out? Yes. My butterfly just went Aretha Franklin. R-E-S-P-C-T. You went, you will survive. Nice. Roll it back down and in forward fold. All right. We're going to shift to the left. Okay, I'm gonna move my chair off to the left. Right toes are gonna to turn up. We're gonna get a bit of a cosmic gesture going on. So I'm gonna shift out and down. If that's not gonna work, you wanna stay straight up. Marvelous. If you've got plantar fasciitis, leave the foot on the floor. Shift down and in, get into that inner thigh on that right leg. Inhaling, exhaling, roll those right feet down, shift opposite side, toes up and come down and in. Now somebody asked me one time, Caroline, why do you have tennis balls on the bottoms of your chairs? They slide where I want them to slide. And it protects the floor. Breathe in, breathe out, slide that foot down, bend the knees, roll the body all the way back up. Heels in, toes in, heels in, toes in. Hands come together at the heart. Shift into your left foot, left hand on the back of a chair if you need to. Arms and right knee rise. Put that foot down on the other side of the left, come down and in. Open up, let that knee rise. Put it back down, heart space. Moose antlers, left leg, butterfly wings. Put it across the right, slide down. Let that body shift open like the sands rise. Heart space. One more time each side. Right leg, right arm. Cross it. Crumple down and in. Lift. Rise. Shift. Back to center. One more time. Open. Left leg. Put it down. Cross or don't. Open up. Lift. Place it down, hands in the heart, and then just hold. If the inside of your body was a beautiful beach, and the winds were the yoga, and the movements, where would your dunes have blown to? Have the sands shifted? Have seashells appeared on the edge of the waterline? Smoothing away all the footprints so that just for you and the path that you're going to walk, you have a blank canvas for where your footprints will follow you. Inhale. Exhale, hands spread down, reach out and up, knees bend, body bends, either make your way back into a seated position in the chair or forward fold, crumple down into a seat on the floor. Legs shift out in front of you. Oh, there you go, I was gonna move that. Staff posture. Let the head rise, shoulders roll up back, palms open. Shifting sands. It's all just shifting sands. Right hand rises. Completing full length stretch all the way up as long as the shoulder is happy and then sweep it back down. Inhale, left arm up. 
stretch, shift, stretch, shift, make space, and let it come down. Both arms reach up. If you need a strap to wrap around your feet, reach for a strap. Otherwise, lean forward, reach for the feet. You could do this standing in a forward fold. You can reach and grab. Ah, just make sure your chair has no wheels. There's nothing slippery. Two more breaths. <sighs> Roll the body up. Both arms slide up. Inhale. Exhale. Take the right leg, cross it over the left. Now, if you happen to be in a chair, you're going to see me. I'm going to bend my leg and I'm going to cross over this way. If you're on the floor, you've got the legs crossed. You may even want to bring that heel all the way across up by the knee or stay crossed at the ankle. Yep, up to you. And then that knee would fold out to the side and then reach forward. Tuck in, folding in and around. Back into cocoon space. <sighs> Draw the breath in. Send it back out. Roll the body up. Gather up that right thigh with you. Pull in. If you want to do this in the balancing version, everything kicks out and up and we hold, or you can just pull and hold. Modified pigeon posture. Big breath in, big breath out. Lower it back down where you're ready. Extend back out one more time. Arms reach up and then back in toward the toes you go. Pachimottanasana or the modified version. My feet are squeaking on the floor. Body rolls back up and in, lift, crossing left ankle over right. I'm going to bend my right knee. I'm going to bring that left across. Sweep those arms up. When you're ready, dive in. So the thigh presses into the belly region, into that colon. Squeezing the kidneys. Squeezing intestines, all the parts that might need a little wringing out. Next time you breathe in, roll up, bring that left leg up with you. Slide it in, or he's gone ahead and popped back into the balance. Beautiful. Pausing. You know, if we stand on a beach and we watch the sands shift on a really windy day, I mean, you see the sheets of sand as they rise up off the surface of the beach and they, and they cut you kind of at the knees, you know, it's like, it's like being sandblasted, but you can't pick out one grain of sand at a time. Release. Lay back, roll all the way down, ah, stretch, ah. from toes to fingers. So, I mean, it's like you could look into your body right now. Can you find a single cell? Can you find a grain of sand? We, we just can't. We can't look that closely, but we, we trust it's there. The hands reach down for the back of the right leg. That leg extends. We pull up and over the body. Supine split. 
You can have a strap that does the same thing, or you can go back into wind relieving posture. And then once you get there, if you're on the floor, you may want to shift from one side to the other and see if there are any dunes that have shifted in your body that need a little, a little extra love. You may even want to take that right leg off to the left side into the extreme version of the spinal twist. Inhaling and exhaling. Find one cell, just one. Even if you just picture it in your mind, picture one cell. The wall of the cell. And there's liquid on the inside and the liquid on the inside, then there's even more inner workings going on inside of the cell, the mitochondria. You now holding on to DNA, RNA. You break those down and they look like two spiral staircases, each one with a little code on the end of each of those branches of what looks kind of like a, like a, a hair comb. All put together in just the perfect way to form the butterfly we are all turning into. Inhale. Exhale, release, stretch out long again. <sighs> I mean, they're little, they're just little brand, little, little tiny dots almost when you see them mapped out. And one little dot could necessarily mean, oh, blonde hair versus brown hair, or blue eyes, or, or monarch butterfly colored wings versus luna moth colored wings. Left leg, grab the back of that thigh, stretch up and over the body, or pull in. And just the slightest deviation could give you kind of a wonky antenna. <laughs> just that one. Just maybe it's the right one. And the left one's like, and the right one's like, hey, it's got a little, kind of like the right side of my body's a little shorter than the left side of my body. So there's a little oomph in there somewhere on the windings and the workings that goes, er, okay, you're just going to be short on this side. Yep, let those bodies shift off to one side if you want to do the spinal twist. Draw the breath in, release it out. Coming back through center, releasing. If you're on the floor, you could tuck something behind the knees. You could lay out long. If you're in a chair, snuggle into the back edge of the chair so that the spine can be nice and long. The feet rest. Firm on the floor. Excuse me. I should have turned my head the other way. <laughs> Draw breath from the crown of the head to the tips of the toes. And go inside to the shift. Maybe it's a shift that's coming with age or a shift toward healing if you've been ill. A shift out of the doldrums of COVIDcation into a brighter spot in life at the moment. Find your shift 
And notice whether you're in the beginning of the process, the middle. And then just settle a little more firmly into the sand. And just be. We as beings are constantly in flux. Even if it's something as simple as reading a book, we don't sit and stare at one letter on the entire page of letters. We thirst for more. Turn the page. You're constantly moving, cells dying and being reborn, moving within our communities, shifting. Let your next breath deepen your awareness. Loosen the jaw, release the next breath between parted teeth. <sighs> Shift the jaw from side to side. Wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes. making all the micro movements that it takes to get you toward the shift to the end of practice, the metamorphosis from beginning to end, finding, finding where you are, maybe a little more clarity, who I am. We'll end as we always do with three deep breaths, a belly breath, a rib cage breath, and a collarbone breath. And let your sigh or your sound, whatever your exultation is, let it, let it join your shifting. Let it merge. Let it be an expression of it. Inhale into the belly. Oh. Breathe into those ribs. Oh. 
and then rise to the collarbones, maybe even the arms shift out, even if you're just going to sigh. Breathe it in. Set it free. Oh. Namaste, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Look first within the self before we look out, making sure that all is filtered through the heart first. I love you. Thank you for being here today. We will be back again next week, Monday and Wednesday. Ah, it is so nice to see everybody. Thank you for hanging out, joining the community. Thanks. Being this good to yourselves. I'll see you love. next week. Thanks again. Bye, Bye everybody. Then.